So apparently you're not a real board gamer until you own one of these things. So um, we picked one up. I was running out of shelf space. Uh, let's stock it. So I'm finally a real board game reviewer because I have a Kallax, so yeah, I am officially a white dude standing in front of a Kallax. Original. Alright, <laughs> let's come up and I'll show you through the shelves the various games we've got up here and why they're where they are. So first up of course we have my favourites sort of lurking around the middle of the shelf. There's Terraforming Mars, Twilight Struggle, Battlestar. Anyone who watches the channel knows I adore these and in general across the shelves everything is more important the higher up it is so games i like less sort of filter down the bottom of the shelf whereas games i love more tend to filter up to the top of the shelf and we'll go right to the top of the shelf to start off with and we've got my painted copy of axis and allies anniversary edition my painted copy of war of the ring and this ratty box i've made for leaving earth that i really need to do a better job of I've also got the Monster Cup up here, which is all of the Arkham Horror Monsters, like hundreds of them. I got this dinky little mug ages ago, but it kind of sits up there. We've got Anachrony and Who's She, because they're really nice display pieces. And uh, my little certificate from Van Ryder Games, which I'm quite proud of. Thanks AJ. So across the top shelf, a lot of these games will feature in my top 100, unsurprisingly. We've got like, star theme games here with Xia, Empires of the Void, Roll for the Galaxy and Sidereal Confluence. And this one featured on my top six, um, games that are great for tops, games that are great for six players recently, uh, cause it's just a hell of a crazy experience. These are a lot of my favorite co-ops that I like playing with groups or solo. So I've got Robbins Crusoe, Block by Block, which is one of Steph's favorite games. Thunderbirds, which I think is absolutely choice. And of course, Spirit Island. Moving on here, we have the serious sort of themed games with Paths of Glory, A Distant Plane. Churchill, which is a really cool game for three people. I uh, really need to review this at some point. Uh, it's one of the few games that works exceptionally well at three. This War of Mine and Black Orchestra. Then got a few more co-ops here that I really like and my painted copy of Rebellion. Heading down the shelves. A lot of the time these aren't exactly organized in any logical or discernible reason. I've kind of thrown them in a sequence that makes sense to me. So I've got like Yokohama, Chinatown and Concordia side by side for no real discernible reason. And then along here you've got Sagrada, the Azores and Potion Explosion and Santorini which all do kind of deserve to live together. And here we have probably my three of my favourite games from this year. Uh, Obsession, Museum and Everdell. Uh, these are all, all three of these are really neat, uh, really well produced, really cool games that came out this year. So expect to see them on the top 100. In my real time crazy games. Uh, Kitchen Ranch and XCOM. Um, I like playing these solo as much as I do like playing them with groups. You know, Pay Dirt, like, this is a game that not a lot of people have really heard of, and I've, I've put off doing a review of it because I don't even know if it's in print, but it's actually a really good game about gold mining. Then we have sort of serious worker placement games with Crisis, Argent, Energy Empire, and Martians. Those are those were really good games. Now, Martians here is another one of these games that uh, I think didn't do very well 
I think it had one of the worst rule books ever made and that put off an awful lot of people and got terrible reviews but if you can actually make it through the crappy ass rule book, a lot of fun. Tammany Hall's there because it fits, it's okay. Alright so now we've got down to here which is Legendary Aliens, like this is the only Legendary game I've played that I've actually liked and I like it a lot. I've played a few of the others and they just really haven't done it for me. Space Corp, a review of this coming up soon, awesome game. Maybe not quite as cool as Leaving Earth, but it's, it's cool in its own right. Police Precinct, uh, this is another one I picked up randomly at a, for like 20 bucks at a convention, and uh, yeah, neat little game. Um, not crazy on the art, but it is what it is. And we have some more solo games, so these are Dawn of Zeds, Nemo's War, Comancheria, and Hostage Negotiator. Um, these are some of the more heavyweight, well these three in particular, some of the more heavyweight solo games out there, but they're really good. Like if you like solo gaming, give these a go and probably no hostage negotiator. Knock the Lucas here because it fits. It's alright. And we've got a whole bunch of games here. My scythe actually fits on these things. I'm actually quite impressed with the Kallax, you can get the whole scythe in there. And This one's fully painted, which is, you'll hear that, me say that a lot because I like fully painted games. Ah, Koleka. This is one of my uh, favorite little hidden gem games. It's a Polish game about queuing for resources um, in the Cold War. It's darkly humorous and I played it with someone who grew up in that era in Poland and she couldn't stop laughing. And we've got Lords of Hellas, the whole kitten caboodle. Uh, games like this have kind of put me off backing Kickstarter to the hilt because like this is the game. This is the stretch goals and all the extras. It's ridiculous. It's just a, a shelf hog. Um, it's a really good game and everything, but it's kind of overkill in the end. Moving on, we've got Last Friday, which people have probably heard me talk about. The Half, which is like the only Uwe on the shelf. Um, I actually don't own that many Uwe's. That's like one of the only two I've got. Then Defenders of the Last Stand. Uh, which it's kind of hard to tell because I've repaired all the damage on the box but this got shipped to me from the US and uh, looked like it had been hit with a sledgehammer and uh, New Zealand Post wouldn't cover repairs so I had to do them myself thanks NZ Post the Millennium Blades like <laughs> there is so much in this game like this is the if any of you guys have watched Yu-Gi-Oh or um, Pokemon or any of those sort of collectible card based game TV shows this is the game about being one of those characters and that it's it's mental there's so much going on yeah continuing down we'll just kind of blast through the rest of them uh, not a lot of these will probably be that shocking to anyone uh, Dead of Winter Ancient World second edition but I got the first edition box Steampunk Rally uh, normally this is a brand new one um, it's a hidden tr movement game where everyone involved in the game's uh, hidden. It's really different. I got it from the same people who did Everdell. Really curious to give that one more play because the first couple we had were really cool. Uh, Flashboard Fire Rescue, Captain Sonar, Space Cadets. These ones here, these are all stacked um, horizontally because they're full of bits that move around. Uh, Alan's End. I only have like the core for this, so I haven't like gone down the rabbit hole that is the Aeon's End universe. Uh, I've really enjoyed the half dozen games I've played of the core. I'm debating getting more of it, but there's like about 600 expansions for this it seems. Uh, then we've got Outlive. This is a this is one of those games that really didn't make an impact and no one was talking about it. And I haven't got around to reviewing it yet, but we've played it twice and it's an exceptionally good uh, worker placement game. Um, it's got a sort of post-apocalyptic theme, but it's really not an Ameritrash game at all. It's very much a Euro. It's it's a bit different and a bit bit of one to check out. So it's got potential to be on a hidden gems list at some time. Uh, uh, down here we've got Thule, who's looking after Arkham Horror. That's all of Arkham Horror reboxed into uh, three boxes. All right, and on the bottom shelf, we've got First Martians and 51st State. Now, these games are both kind of on the outer. I mean, I've tried to love First Martians a lot, but 
And I've played half a dozen scenarios, but it's just not as good as Robinson Crusoe. It's it's kind of depressing, Robinson Crusoe, and Robinson Crusoe is already pretty damn depressing as it is. Uh, that's all of the Zombicide, so that's all of it uh, compacted into two boxes. I keep the miniatures separate. Uh, moving on, we've got Mountains of Madness, which is another game that's possibly going to leave the collection at some point. It's it's good fun maybe once a year. It's one of those games that if you play it too often, you get really, really bored of it. Uh, then we've got Salvation Road and Relic. These are kind of games that they're, they're good and all, but they're not necessarily amazing. Then we've got the gap where the recharger goes. Because you've got to have a power point in the room somewhere. Moving on, we've got Android. Um, I love this game. It's it's flawed. It's it's a mess. It's it's all over the show, but it's it's kind of a beautiful piece of broken art, and uh, it's definitely one that's never going to leave the collection. Uh, and I hear they might be doing a second edition of it, which would be pretty cool. Um, and New Angeles, which is set in the same setting as Android. And you've got Cytosis, which is a pretty cool work placement game about the inner workings of a cell. And then a few games to finish off. Smash Up, Chaos in the Old World, which is fully painted, Dinosaur Island, the classic Fortress America, and my old copy of Demarker. So those are the games that made it onto the big shelf. So let's talk about the other shelves. Okay, so this is the shelf of boxes of unusual size. So these could probably go on that shelf, but they don't really fit. So you got Gloomhaven, Cthulhu Wars, and Space Hulk up the top here. They're just big games I need somewhere to fit. This shelf is the games I'm undecided about, whether I'm going to keep, whether I'm going to get rid of, uh, whether I need to play them more. I think something like Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, I'll play it a few times and then probably get rid of it. It's, I don't think it's a keeper. Gen 7, we've done the entire campaign and it was good and it was really fun, but I don't know whether I want to play the campaign again. Yeah. And so was the Outer Rim, which is, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Then we've got two shelves of smaller box games. And this is where the shim boxes go. So Raiders and Architects. Uh, there's plenty of space there now for Circadians and Paladins and whatever else Shem and Sam are cooking up. There's a whole bunch of really cool little games in here. And some of my particular favorites like Between Two Cities, Blood Bowl Team Manager and The Captain is Dead are two game, three games I absolutely love. Um, same with Century Golem Edition. I have no idea why anyone would buy the original Century. This one's so much better looking. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more expensive. And then the bottom shelves, bottom two shelves. Uh, old games I can't bear to part with, even though I'm probably not going to play them again anytime soon. So you yeah, have Civilization in there, which I love, but who the hell's got 12 hours? And the original version of Game of Thrones. A fully painted, fully expanded Descent First Edition, Horus Heresy, which is also fully painted, and Twilight Imperium 3. And everyone's playing Twilight Imperium 4. Twilight Imperium 3 isn't cool anymore. I think there's nothing wrong with it. All right, that is that shelf. And this is the final shelf. And this one's a bit of an oddity because from here on up, this is the shelf of shame. The shelf of unplayed games, of lost regrets of experiences to come. And there's a few on here like Near and Far, I just haven't got to because it's a long campaign. Same with Charterstone. Hannibal, I just haven't got anyone to play that with yet. It's gonna take a bit to learn it as well. But there's a whole bunch of other games on here that are either new uh, or just haven't got round to playing. And like some like Endeavor, I really should play that. I mean, Jarrett gave me a copy of it quite a while ago and I still haven't got around to playing it so apologies if you're watching this Jared I do intend to play that game I also picked up a few like Stronghold, Dirt Cheap and um, but The Expanse which is probably the next one we're going to take off the shelf of shame and give a go uh, that's because people on Patreon said you should play The Expanse so I should really listen to them then we have down here the shelf of borrowed games uh, wonderful people uh, lend me board games uh, when I ask them and that's a lot of what keeps the channel going is I can't afford to buy every single game out there I've got a lot on the shelves as you can see but I can't get everything so Horrified, Copenhagen and Pavlov's house were all borrowed from friends so thanks team M much appreciated and then finally we have the shelf of regret so these are games I'm either done with or contemplating getting rid of or 
I'm not too sure what to do with them. Some will probably end up selling, some will end up trading. Like Legendary Encounters X Files, it just just wasn't as good as Legendary Aliens, and I don't think I need both games in my collection. Um, Pursuit of Happiness it actually made people really angry when they played it for some reason. And Ex Libris, just the, the the writing on the cards is so hard to read. It's just a giant pain to play. And Splendor, I'm about to review that one, but I just prefer um, Century Golem. I know that's going to cause a few fights out there. All right, so that is the shelves. Thank you for watching this incredibly conventional video from Three Minute Board Games. Let us know what you thought in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and support us on Patreon. <laughs> hey, this one's a weird size box. It doesn't belong in the permanent shelf. <laughs> Mwah.